Hello everyone, this is Frank and welcome to Teachly University. And in this lecture today, we're gonna to be diving into Genevieve Baran's book, Your Invisible Power, Attaining Your Desires and How to Live Life and Love It. And this is a wonderful little book that I recommend you pick up and we're gonna be diving into it a little bit today. And there's so much nuggets of wisdom in the book, it'll probably take several lectures to cover it. So I'll, I'll obviously be devoting a few more lectures uh, to this book in the future. So, but it's, I wanted to start, uh, by focusing, I think, on a couple of really powerful excerpts from the book that we're going to be discussing in today's lecture. So uh, from the book, Genevieve says that no person, place, or thing can give you happiness and a feeling of contentment, but the joy of living comes from within. Therefore, it is here recommended, rather than otherwise, that you should make the effort to obtain the things which you feel will bring you joy, provided, as previously stated, that your desires are in accord with the joy of living. So what I think Genevieve and what authors like Neville and Neville Goddard, Napoleon Hill, Thomas Troward, Wallace D. Waddles, and others, I think really discuss, and, and one of the underlying themes of their work is that to change your external environment, to change your circumstances, it starts from within. What happens outside of us is a mirror is of what is happening within our mental studio or within our imagination. And what we choose to focus on on a consistent basis can determine much of what happens outside of us. So then if we are to change what is happening outside of us, we must tap into this invisible power that we have within. These intangible resources that are available to us that if we utilize can make our wildest dreams become a reality. And that starts then with cultivating the feeling of joy and happiness now in your current circumstances, regardless of what's happening outside of you. This is not always easy because we rely on our senses to validate what is happening or whether or not what we want is possible. So if we want to start a business, but we see that in our current circumstances, we don't have the money, resources, relationships, education, et cetera, to accomplish this goal, then we automatically assume it's not possible. But what Genevieve is saying here, and what you'll see throughout the rest of the lecture is that once we harness this invisible power through the power of our imagination, by thinking and feeling your desires into existence, then that's how we can bring about change. But it starts then by not waiting for something outside of us to feel a certain way, but rather we begin to feel happy now. We, we begin to feel abundant and joyful and in love with life now. And when we begin to do this, then we begin to reshift our focus, as I've said many times before. We change our modes of thinking, and we choose to focus more on solutions, on possibility, on new experiences, rather than the same old thought processes of the past that have given us the same predictable results. So it's recommended then that to bring about your desires, it must come in accordance with the joy of living, where you're already feeling joyful now. You are embracing the process of creation and enjoying and living in the present moment. And we've seen that in study that being in the present moment, we enter states of flow, which is most, the most desirable mindset we want to be in. Flow being that we are immersed in what we're doing, but we're not worrying about the future or living in the past. Where we're in this state of flow where nothing else seems to matter. We're loving the delicious present moment. And by living in the present moment, that's when we begin to see all the resources and possibilities around us for change and self-improvement or improving any other circumstance in our life. So then Genevieve says that the word effort, as her employed, is not intended to convey the idea of strain. All study and meditation should be without strain or tension. And I think this is important because in the process of personal transformation or goal achievement, we use the word effort, and this word is used a lot, or taking action. We are told that we must take action in order for us to achieve our goals. And obviously, taking action is important. This lecture was not going to create itself, for example. I had to take the, the time and effort to organize my content, organize my ideas, create the slides, and take time out of my day to create this lecture. But the problem is that when we use strain or when we try to force a particular outcome from occurring, we unconsciously embrace worry and fear. When we try to force something to happen, we become prey to impatience, frustration, 
and of course fear. To transcend and overcome, it should not, it should not be. We should not. This process should not involve strain or tension. Rather, it should be the opposite, where we simply accept whatever it is that we're feeling, whatever it is that we're experiencing in our current circumstances, and let go. As Dr. David Hawkins has suggested in his book, Letting Go, also the title of the book. So by letting go, by embracing the present moment and accepting whatever it is you're feeling and experiencing, no longer then do you give energy or power to negative emotions. No longer are you trying to force something to happen because you are already happy now. Because any goal that we wish to accomplish, we want to accomplish it because of the state it's going to put, put us in, whether it's a relationship, having a certain amount of money or material, material possessions or a certain career. We want these things because of the state it put us in, it would put us in. So then rather than waiting for something to happen to feel a certain way, begin to feel that your desired results are here now. And by doing so, then we life becomes less stressful and with less tension and strain. We don't want to force an outcome, rather than we want to become the person that would bring forth our desires and our desirable reality. So Genevieve says that to try to remember that the picture you think, feel, and see is reflected in the universal mind, and by the natural law of reciprocal action, must return to you in either spiritual or physical form. Knowledge of this law of reciprocal action between the individual and the universal mind opens you to free access to all you may wish to possess or to be. So we hear the term universal mind, universal intelligence, the universe, God, energy, natural law. We hear a lot of these words interchangeably, but they all mean the same thing. That there is this intangible intelligence and energy that exists within us and within around us that if we tap into through not just our thoughts, but our feelings. And we talked about the term congruency, when we, where our mind and body are one. There's no longer any internal resistance. And what I mean by that is, for example, let's say we desire or imagine having a certain career. But subconsciously, we feel like it's not possible. So we feel perhaps frustrated. We feel maybe we, we don't stand as straight. There's a slower pace to our step. We breathe a certain way. We feel that even though consciously we want something, we feel that it is not possible. So congruency means there's no longer that internal resistance. We don't have self-doubt anymore. We think and act in a way that is aligned with what it is that we want. We truly believe that what we want is possible and it is already yours. And by through this congruence, we then much easily tap into this universal mind, this intelligence when we impress upon it what it is that we desire and possess. This doesn't mean perfection. This doesn't mean we're always going to be feeling euphoric or happy all the time. But when we make the effort, even just for a few minutes a day, to enter this state of congruency where mind and body are one, and when we use our physiology, when we begin to feel that what we want is possible, we tap into this intelligence, this energy that exists. And by impressing upon it what we want through the way we think and feel, we can improve various aspects of our lives and visualizing what it is that we want and seeing it within our, the mental studio of our own mind and live out what we want in the desirable life within our minds first. And by doing so then with such intensity, that can begin to change our circumstances. So thus condition whatever you think and feel yourself to be, the creative spirit of life bound to the faithfully reproduce in a corresponding reaction. There is a great reason for picturing yourself and your affairs as you wish them to existing facts, though invisible to the physical eye, and live in your picture. An honest endeavor to, to do this, always recognizing that your own mind is a projection of the originating spirit, will prove to you that the best there is is yours in all your ways. So it is visualizing and picturing in your mind how you want life to be. How do you want your day to be? What kind of people do you want to interact with? How do you want your day to go when it comes to your job and career? What do you want to accomplish in a given day? How do you want to feel? What do you want to do? How much income would you like to produce? What kind of meaning, what kind of products and services would you like to create to help others? What is your legacy? 
Again, it's asking ourselves these empowering questions of what it is that we want and then picturing our mind the answer to these very questions and feeling as if what we want is possible. And by using our imagination, and Neville discusses this in much of his work, and feeling is a secret, using your own wonderful human imagination, by using our imagination to our advantage, rather than to our disadvantage, because oftentimes we imagine worst case scenarios. We imagine that our dream's not coming true. We imagine life as we don't want it to be. We focus more on what we don't want rather than what we do want. So it's picturing yourself and your affairs as you wish them to existing facts, meaning that you imagine that what you want has already been accomplished, praying as if what you want is already, has already been answered. And by doing this enough times, by living in this mindset, we can begin to become that person that will bring forth these desires because we are no longer living in the past or worrying about a worst case scenario that can happen in the future. We are living in the present moment now. We're embracing and living as if what we want is already here. And that starts with what we project in our own mind. So having reached a state of ordered mentality, you are no longer in a constant state of mental hurry. Hurry is fear and consequently destructive. I think out of all the, the excerpts from Genevieve's book, I think this is the most powerful one. Because I said before, we oftentimes, and I'm guilty of this, we try to force a specific outcome. When we see an outcome not happening in our time frame, we become impatient, frustrated, and fearful, and we begin to then try to force an outcome. We try to hurry it, force it into existence. So we take action, and we take more action, and we, get, we stay busy thinking that if we just stay busy, then the outcome will occur. The problem is, more often than not, this never happens because we're operating on a different wavelength that is separate from what it is that we wish to desire. By operating on the basis of lack, we attract more lack into our life because we're trying to force the outcome. And being in a hurry all the time, and, and we're all guilty of this, and in this modern age that we live in where with social media and this constant 24-hour news cycle in our smartphones, we always feel like we have to be connected. We always feel like we're in a hurry all the time. We're always looking for excitement. But it's through periods of downtime, through periods when we're not busy, that we take the time to imagine and live in the wish fulfilled. But we're not trying to hurry an outcome. We embody and live the outcome. And when we do that, we no longer feel like we have to hurry because what we want is already here. We feel whole and complete. And ultimately, that is why we want to accomplish all of our goals, because we want to feel whole. Why wait to feel whole and complete when you can feel that way right now? When we feel this way right now, we don't need as much anymore. We no longer feel then that we have to be in a hurry. And we can live in the present moment and maintain a consciousness of order, an order of consciousness for that matter. And we can enter these states of flow much more often. So the conscious use of this great power attracts to you great multiplied resources, intensifies your wisdom, and enables you to make use of advantages which you formerly failed to recognize. So by using this invisible power, of our imagination, by being still, by visualizing our desired life, and by not trying to strain the outcome, but to embody and live as if the wish is fulfilled. We can then, we can then recognize new opportunities we never recognized before, resources, advantages we never have thought or realized before because we've been blinded by our own negative self-talk and negative thinking. That has blinded us from seeing that, in fact, we have all the resources and tools available to change our life immediately and to change it for the better. But that requires self-awareness and recognizing this great power within. And by using self-awareness and realizing and start to measure our outcomes based on our thoughts and behaviors and actions, we can then make new choices and new decisions that can transform our personality and our personal reality and thus helping us attract the very resources and tools and advantages we need to transform our life for the better. So then can you not realize that this still greater secrets may be disclosed? Also that you hold the key within yourself with which to unlock the secret chamber that contains your heart's desire. 
all that is necessary in order that you may use this key and make your life exactly what you wish it to be. It's a careful inquiry into the unseen causes which stand back of every external and visible condition. Then bring these unseen causes into harmony with your conception, and you will find that you can make practical work in realities of possibilities, which at present seem fantastic dreams. All of us have dreams and desires we wish to accomplish. But yet we abandon these dreams because as we progress through adulthood, we are forced to face quote unquote reality. And we use our senses to determine whether or not an idea or a dream is possible. If there's nothing to validate that we want is possible, if there's no evidence that what we want is possible, then we dismiss it. This is a big mistake. Validation starts from within where we begin to then imagine these fantastic dreams and possibilities. And we begin to feel them and observe them into reality. And when we observe them into reality, we, we take the natural action steps necessary to bring these dreams forth into your existence. And that means feeling as if the wish is fulfilled. Being aware and recognizing that we have these unseen powers within us to change. When we recognize these unseen powers and analyze the unseen causes of what happens in our external environment, we begin to see that we have this great power to change whatever is happening in our life. And that means starting with possibility. And that means taking the time every day through meditation, prayer, or journaling to visualize that what you want is already here. And that is how we unlock the secret chamber where our hearts desire. And that means following your intuition. And there's a lot of noise out there. When you turn on YouTube and Instagram and all the social media platforms, there's a lot of opinion as to how you can live your life, what you should do or shouldn't do when it comes to various aspects of your life. And of course, you're listening to this lecture, and I'm, of course, one, one of amongst countless voices on YouTube and other channels as to giving you advice on how to live your life. But I would argue that the best way to start is to sit down and listen to your instincts. Listen to yourself. Remove yourself from all the distraction that engulfs you on a daily basis and begin following your instincts and listen to your heart as to what you truly want. And when you listen to yourself and listen to that voice, enough times you will get the answer you need to know what action step you need to take next and what thought processes you need to embrace in order to bring forth your desired life or, to, or what kind of person you need to be in order to change. And, and that is all about finding your authentic self. So then finally, through the picture forms that mold into which the formless substance takes shape, visualizing or mental seeing things and conditions as you wish them to be is the condensing the specializing power in you that might be illustrated by the lens of a magic lantern. So by visualizing and seeing things in condition as you wish them to be in the mental studio of your mind, doing so creates a, the condition or where about your mind then becomes almost like Aladdin's lamp, where you can begin to impress upon your mind what it is that you desire, visualizing the kind of life you be, you want or wish to have. And by visualizing this with such emotion and feeling, your mind really can become a magic lantern in a way and can bring forth what you desire. Now, as far as what is possible or impossible, that is not for me or anyone else to determine. That is up for, up for you to decide as to what is impossible or possible. You have to decide that. But whatever it is that you wish, begin to visualize this in your mental studio of your mind, seeing things in condition as you wish them to be. And by seeing and feeling the conditions in life that you want, over time, you harness this power that can bring forth the life that you desire, thus tapping into this invisible power that if utilized in such a way, can transform your life for the better. Thank you so much for listening to this lecture, and I'll see you next time. Take care.